Well, good afternoon. Um, I don't know about you, but it's a bit cold outside today. So I thought maybe a good thing that we could do for Forest School is to do an activity that, although we've been outside, I've been out this morning and I've taken the dogs for a walk and I've been stick collecting, which is one of my favourite things to do. Um, I thought actually it would be nice to bring that craft inside and I can do it while I'm having a nice hot cup of tea. Okay, so to do this, there are several things you're going to need. Um, you're going to need four sticks that are around about the same length. And you're also going to need some string or you could use wool instead or anything else that you could use to tie your sticks together. Okay, the first part of our process that we're going to do today is to make ourselves a frame using the sticks and the string. Now that does involve tying a few knots. Now I know there are some of you in sycamore class particularly who are amazing knot tires. You impress me so much and you use them when we're doing our tarps and we're making our shelters and you're fantastic. So today is your day to shine. Okay, so the two types of knot that we're going to learn today the first one is called a clove hitch, and that is how we get the string, first of all, onto our stick. And the second knot that we're going to learn is called a square lashing. And that is how we tie it together so it is nice and secure to make us a really good, solid frame. Okay, so we get a hand shot this time. I've never done one like that. Let me move the stick out of the way for the moment because the first knot we need to try is the clove hitch. Now, some people call this the spectacle knot because when we start this one off, it looks like you're trying to make a pair of spectacles with the string. Okay, so you start off, I've got this length of string here and I'm going to make sure I've got a little bit left at the end because I'm going to need that to finish off with my square lashing. So I'm going to make myself a loop like so in the knot and then I'm going to make another one exactly the same. So now you can see it looks like a pair of spectacles. Okay, I make sure each time that this, the loop goes in the same direction. And when I put the second knot over the first like this, I'm going to show you on my finger first of all, pretend my finger was the stick and you tighten it like so, you can see that it's actually secured on my finger. So that is the clove hitch and that is how we're going to be putting our string onto the stick. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that one once more. And this time, instead of attaching it to my finger, I'm gonna attach it to the stick. Okay, so the idea is we're going to want our two sticks lashed together like that to make a nice right angle there for us. Okay, so I'll make one loop. There's the first bit of my spectacles. I make my other loop, cross them over. I'm going to pop my stick in the middle, pull my two ends, whoops, don't let go of it because otherwise you look silly on camera. And there we go. That is my clove hitch that is nicely secured onto that stick. And even if I pull it now, that's not going to come off. Okay. So then we move on to the square lashing. And I think I'm going to move the camera so you get a better view of that. Okay. So square lashing in true blue Peter fashion. Here's one I've done earlier. This is the kind of thing that we're aiming for. So you can see I've got bands of string going around and then I've got my tightening bands around here that are the bits that pull those sticks really, really tight together and really secure that lashing together, okay? So to do mine, here's my clove hitch I've just tied. I'm going to cross those pieces of wood over, pull my sleeves up, otherwise they cover the wood. Okay, move back this way a little bit, the chair in the way. Okay, and I'm basically going to go over one stick, under 
the next. And I'm mo moving in a circular pattern and it is just over, under, over, under, and you repeat over and over and over again until you're there to do your tightening um, lashings. So I'll come back to you when I'm at that point. Right, so I'm coming towards the, you see it's gone very nicely. Each time I'm pulling them together as tightly as I can. Over, under, over, under, going round and round in a circle. Each time it comes to this point, I give it a quick pull just to make sure it's nice and tight. I've got about this much rope left. As you can see, it's not a great deal, probably about enough for me to go round maybe once more. And that's certainly it, one last pull there. Now I'm going to go over the top here. So I'm crossing over where I've made these two bunches of string here, I'm going to cross that over and I'm gonna bring it round. So you can see here, I'm bringing it round, back up to the front here, and this is where I really, this is the bit where you get it as tight as you can. And maybe you could have got enough string there to be able to do that a couple of times. And then you should remember when we did our clove hitch, we had a little bit of string left. So we're now going to use that string and we're going to tie that off. Okay, now hopefully, oops, when you've done that, it would help if I could just tie a normal knot, you should have made yourself something that looks a little bit like that. Obviously, you've got to the others to do as well, but yes, yeah, so this is the sort of thing we're aiming for. It could be that actually you're going to try and make a triangular one. You may be lucky enough to be able to find a Y-shaped stick to be able to do this with. So what we're now going to do is to lace this up with more pieces of rope between these two posts here, which you still can't see. There we go, move that back away a little bit. Between these two posts here, so that we will be able to do some weaving in and out of there. Okay, so again, you can use any type of string, um, any cordage that you happen to have to do this. It doesn't particularly, whoops, doesn't particularly matter what you use. I'm using this because it was just sparing the draw and I've no idea what it's for. When I've done this, I'll probably work out what it was for and realise that I need to take it all apart again to be able to use it. But never mind, for the time being, I'm going to use this. So all I'm going to do is just secure it onto one my branches there and then I can bring it top to bottom top to bottom hopefully all the way whoops a bit long all the way along here and that will hopefully make my weaving loom I'll show you when I've done okay so there we go we've got some sort of loom there um, it's up to you now what you want to weave through that um, I will post some ideas at the end of the video that I make today um, of ideas that other people have done. You may go out and find different grasses, different branches, different leaves and do natural things. You might also think, you know, I'd like to use some nice coloured wool, in which case, as you know, at Forest School, we do use our wool quite a lot. So feel free to do that um, and show me what creations you manage to come up with. But most of all, have fun. <laughs> Okay, so Minnie has been outside with me and we've been looking for things that we could do in our weaving, haven't we? She was so helpful, really. Um, so, ugh, eat on my own hair. Um, I found some clematis, which isn't, oh, she wants a cut on her, which is a bit dead at this time of year, but great for weaving. Um, this bit of bush has blown off. It's very windy out there today. So there's all sorts of branches and sticks and things that have just blown away and a stick, okay? So we're gonna have a go at weaving these through and onto our frame and see what they look like. Okay, so I started off with this one. And basically, I'm just gonna go over and under and over and under and over and under each of my cords on here. Note to self, just check that there's no thorns on it. On this one, there's lots of thorns on it and it really hurts when you prick yourself, just, you know, from my mistake there. 
Okay, so let's try the stick. I'm going to do the opposite. So I went under that one. So I'm going to go over it, over, under, over, under, over, under. You'll probably have a lot more time and care over doing yours than me. So there's my stick. The clematis, now interestingly, um, this makes really good kindling as well. Um, so when you're actually lighting a fire, having dried out bits of like clematis stem is supposedly very good. That's from my bushcraft friend uh, called Jonathan. He knows a thing or two about this. I suppose it's his job. So there we go. And because the clematis is quite bendy, I can do the same with the other side. This time I'm going to go over these, over, under, over, under. And basically I'm going to build up my weaving like that. Okay, just to see how we get on. So that was my effort. Um, I could go back and I could add different coloured wools and ribbons and anything I wanted to to that. It's You don't have to go and get natural materials. I'm just like my forest school, so I thought I would. Um, it was just an idea. Um, see what you guys make of it. I'd be, I would love to see anything that you do make. It would be really interesting. Um, and above all, have some fun. Like I said, after this video, I will post some examples, some photographs of examples that people have done that have spent a bit more time on it than me. Maybe I was a little bit rushed today. But anyway, take care. Bye-bye.